We're back with the power panel. Stockwell, David, Francoise, and David number two. The Ontario <laughs> government says it will deliver on a campaign promise to ban cell phones in classrooms. A formal announcement is coming, but it's caused some debate about whether or not this is something that the provincial government should pursue on a policy level or if it should be left up to the school boards or even on a school-to-school -school basis. So, David, I'll start with you. What do you think? I was looking at my phone just yeah. then. I mean, look. <laughs> Everyone it, was at the break, I was it, noting. If you had had cell phones like this when I was 16, I would not have made it out of high school. I never would have made it into university, <laughs> even if Lori Laughlin and Felicity Huffman were both my mom. If Aunt Becky allegedly. paid your way, you wouldn't. It, it, I mean, the most surprising thing about this to me is that you're allowed to have a cell phone in a class during instructional time, or allowed to have it on in a classroom during instructional time. I've only got a five-year-old and a two-year-old, so we're not at that stage. Uh, but this is an interesting thing for me that this is allowed to go on. Now, look, enforcement and policing is another thing. Is it just a distraction because there are far more controversial changes mm -hmm. that the Ford government is making to uh, educational supports in terms of class sizes, junior kindergarten, kindergarten, and uh, supports for autism students. But just as a matter of policy, the most surprising thing for me is that you are allowed to have a cell phone on in class during instructional time in 2019. Well, well, uh, I know some older kids, uh, friend, and, and they are sometimes, a, to play devil's advocate, they do use them as a tool mm -hmm. for certain, I mean, they have certain apps and, and homework, and lots of them even text you with their teacher. get a calculator and a geometry yeah. they, they text with their teacher. So I don't know. What do you think? Well, I do think that uh, it should be, uh, I don't mind their policy. I think uh, it's kind of uh, just the principle after that. The devil is in the detail, how it's going to be applied. Applied, uh, from school to school to school and school boards and so on. I think the teachers are the best in place to know what are the needs of their of their students. Um, if it's just a question of, of, of getting back the management of the class, because I talk to lots of teachers and they say it's incredible. I don't teach no more. I police. I, 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 I try to bring people and, and they don't teach us that when we do the curriculum uh, to, to obtain our license to practice as a as a teacher uh, so that's going to be one more thing that they will have to to do but they already have because uh, uh, I must have crossed uh, 100 kids coming down here and everybody's got their their nose on their phone Not I looked at kids. us adults all we do us, the yeah. same I look at all the journalists in CBC <laughs> when I go in it's incredible it's get your prayer. phone down yeah. Yeah. and we won't talk about Stockwell we know what he does at dinner time with his phone but anyway <laughs> that is so mean it's going to be hard <laughs> it's going to be hard Hard. No secret. No, no, no cabinet secret. Do you here. have an addiction? Well, n I, I tell my wife it's not an addiction. It's, <laughs> it's, it's you know keeping up with the revenue stream. But I, I, you know, and she says this thing this should be banned in restaurants too. Uh, I think it's great. When uh, the uh, uh, Premier Ford uh, did the tour on education issues that people want to address, this one was almost 100% among parents Ooh. saying they should be yeah, banned. 97%, yeah. It's 97, yeah, and and but it still allows teachers if they want to. Is there some teaching has to go on where the kids use the phone? Then they do that, and special needs are going to be addressed. But there's no question that uh, this is an impediment. Teachers have enough to deal with in the classroom. If you leave it just up to teachers, then you know what happens. The teacher who wants to ban them in that class, all the students will say, "Yeah, well, Mr. So and So in that class, or Mrs. So and So over here uh, says we can do it, and you can't. You're the big meanie." So I think it's good to have some uniformity here. And it's sort of ironic when you think about it, this would be the only time of day where kids wouldn't be having their noses on the screens. Uh, you know, at home it's almost 24 seven. So I think it's great. It's got huge public support and there'll be certain allowances made so that their, uh, their learning won't be stunted by this supposedly draconian rule. I wonder I if Stock called Harper great. a big meanie when he couldn't get what he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll have to see what the, what the details are when it comes to kids with disabilities, for example, or, or certain programs. Right, um, right. they're going to make have, some allowance for Yeah, that, they have said that, absolutely right. Uh, David Ortel, sorry, what, what do you think? Well, this morning I was lecturing at Concordia University, granted it's university level, but actually it was the first time I saw this. Attendance was confirmed by the students having to use their cell phone to mm. prove they were in the classroom. Oh. And, and so it's, 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 it kind of made me think that maybe instead of fighting it, maybe we could do more education and more integration of technology rather than prohibiting it. And, and I will go on the other side of this issue and saying rather than, and then, because right now in Quebec, there's a 15 year old student that's actually suing uh, his school mm -hmm. because uh, the cell phone was confiscated yep. 
for a few hours. So this that guy's is actually, gonna be, that guy's got a future in politics. This, there you go. <laughs> so this is literally before the courts, and I agree. I agree with the points. I, I'm not disagreeing with the points about teachers having way too much to do already and having to police. But a lot of students, uh, I read some interviews, and a lot of students, uh, a lot of professors are saying, teachers are saying, well, they're hiding the cell phone. Uh, they're hiding it on their person, and 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 so it's and kind of a losing it. battle, it sounds. And rather than prohibiting, I would say let's find innovative ways to interact with technology and get the, the students more involved through technology rather than taking it out completely. Well, we'll see where this goes. I have to admit that I actually sprained my ankle on the eve of the last federal election because I tripped <laughs> while, while oh, checking my phone. Flashy. So, yeah, what a winner. All right, thanks, everyone. Thanks to the Power <laughs> Panel. David Ertel, Stockwell Day, Francoise Boivet, and David Cochran. Are cell phones in the classroom a learning tool or a distraction? Ontario announced a plan today to ban phones in class starting in September. Minister of Education Lisa Thompson says that in a consultation last fall, 97% of parents wanted the ban and that it allows students to focus on, quote, foundational skills like reading, writing and math. So should cell phones be banned? Joining me with two different perspectives in Montreal. University of Montreal Professor Terry Carcenti, who is a Canada Research Chair on Information and Communication Technologies in Education, and in Toronto, Laura Mullen is a writer and co-host of Play Me, a CBC podcast. Hi to both of you. Thanks so much for doing this. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Mullen, I'll start with you. Uh, let's, stay, let's get right to it. What's your position on this? Good thing or bad thing? As a mom, I think it's a good thing to ban cell phones. I have been an advocate for that for sure. I don't know if what we heard today will do anything. It doesn't really sound like the policy goes far enough and it puts too much emphasis on the teachers to try and manage the situation. Professor Carcenti, what do you think? Well, I think a simple ban is wishful thinking. I do think that technologies have a significant role to play in the classroom. And I don't think, you know, even those 97% of the parents were uh, you know, uh, would, would want something like an interdiction or a ban on cell phones. I don't think it's going to solve any problem. I think schools have an education mission there that we would be missing if we don't try to integrate technologies in the classroom. Uh, Ms. Mullen, you're a mom, I know, right? Well, how do you, what is your, your child's interaction with phones like, and does that impact the way that you view this issue? That's absolutely what impacts it. I, I feel like phones are so addictive. I see my, my daughter and her friends glued to their phones. And as a mom, I like to know that when she goes to school, she has an opportunity to put them down. I, I know that there is an argument that they are um, an excellent educational tool, but I don't feel that that takes away from uh, the downside of it. Um, I hear about... Um, I hear about phones in the classroom, but I hear about phones at recess, phones at lunchtime, phones at school dances, live streaming on school trips. And I think there has to be a break at some point because they are such a distraction. Uh, Professor Carcenti, what about the, the, that, that issue at the heart of it, the issue of, of focus and the ability to focus? I think anyone who has a kid or, or knows a kid it, it can attest to what Ms. Mullen is describing, this sort of constant screen time that you feel like you're always policing. So uh, what about that focus issue? What do you think? Well, well, not banning cell phone doesn't mean that students have to use them all the time in the classroom. I just think that, uh, on the contrary, I mean, uh, you're, you're saying that, you know, uh, you see kids glued to their cell phone. Mm -hmm. What if schools were able to help them not to be glued to their cell phone? What if schools were able to teach them to be more responsible in their use of cell phones? I mean, if 97% of, uh, of the parents think there's a problem with cell phone, and there is one, if we just ban it from schools, who's going to help the, the teenagers become better users of technology? better users of cell phone uh, is it really going to change what we see in our society where you see all these teenagers glued to their cell phone not only yours I mean <laughs> everywhere I mean if you go to any restaurant you see all these families having family you know lunches dinners and everybody is, is, is on a cell phone I mean it, that's not what we want so I think schools have a role to play there I, I'm not sure that banning cell phones would really help anyone there what is the role, I guess, Professor, though, of, of the school? Like, how do they police that? And I ask because you mentioned the example of the restaurant, and uh, I know for myself, I'm not a teenager, sadly, <laughs> but my, when I go to a restaurant with my dad, he says, like, put the phone away. Like, I cannot be on that phone. Uh, so, so th that you know, speaking to the idea of just saying no and banning it, uh, you know, what do you think about that? Well, professor. I 
Okay, well, I, I think it's, it's, it's going to be a great challenge. And, you know, if you look at the uh, Toronto School District, what they did, they had a ban for four years, and in 2011, they decided to, uh, to go back and, you know, to look at ways that, you know, innovative ways where technologies could play a role in the classroom. And again, I'm not saying you need strict rules, you need rules, but again, you need to teach those students, you know, that technologies and cell phones are not only there to play or to, you know, use social media, they're also there to learn, and it's also good not to use them all the time. Uh, some countries, they teach uh, teenagers uh, about the use of cell phones and their health. You know, uh, how can it be good and how can it be bad if you use it too much? So why don't we make it part of the curriculum instead of, you know, making it evil? That's a good point. That's an interesting point, Ms. Mullen. What do you think about that? I mean, this idea that you might even make it more attractive if you say you can't use it. Well, there have been schools, particularly in Europe and England, that have banned them altogether, which is what I think should happen. I think kids should be able to take them to school, put them in their knapsack and leave them there for the day and not have them out really at all. And they have shown that, that there's less bullying, less anxiety, more focus. So I think there has been some studies that prove that it does, uh, it is more effective. And I, I just, I think it's too much to put on teachers. I, with one child, have the hardest time trying to control her screen time. I, I don't know how a teacher can be expected to be managing 30 kids. But Ms. Mullen, what about the, the concept that there are perhaps you know, benefits to it. There are educational tools on it, like Professor Carcenti said, like there are uh, the, the idea of having rules and, and there being, con, you know, restrictions on it, but still it being available. If it's going to be part of your life outside of school, why wouldn't it be part of your life inside school? Absolutely. If there is some system that could be implemented, because obviously cell phones aren't going away, we have to work with them. Um, I just feel as a mom, though, I feel like my, my kids' generation is sort of being the beta tester of how this is going to impact their lives. We all went through school without being addicted to a phone and glued to a phone, so I feel like something does have to happen. There has to be some, some rules. I don't know if what the government has implicated, has um, said that they're going to do is going to do that. Um, I'm open to suggestions, but I, I do feel it's a problem that I would love to see rectified somehow. And Professor Carcenti, last word to you. What about the logistics of it? I mean, I know that, that, that this has actually not been a formal announcement yet. We're expecting it to come down the road, but that there will be some discretion on the part of the I, I was in France. Yeah, I was yeah, in France ahead. last January, and they have a ban. They have a ban until grade uh, seven. But again, it's very, very difficult for them. So unless you know you you really search students, I mean, there's no way you know for sure if they have it or not for them. And uh, on the contrary, I would say that you know all the principals I spoke with, they all said that students find ways to stick in their cell phone in the classroom and use it because, especially in high school, there are you know 30, 32 students per class. So it's very, very challenging for teachers. So instead of banning it again, uh, I would really focus on education and I'm not saying that we have to use it all the time on the contrary I think there should be rules but again making it evil I don't think will help things I think we need to teach those students how to make better use of cell phones in schools after schools everywhere else lots to see how this plays out the the uh, certainly the details will be interesting thank you so much to both of you thanks to Laura Mullen and Terry Carcenti appreciate your time today thank, thank you, you.